All right, brand new I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is coming up next with a Golden Globe Award recap. The NFL playoffs are set, and I have to admit that I am rooting for the fucking New England Patriots. Don't tell anyone. And the young shooter, Dean Collins, is rocking with me later on in the show, and he is going to be the first to break a big pending beef between actress Patricia Arquette from True Romance and Escape from Dan Mora. And Lady Gaga. That's right. Breaking news from the young shooter and so much more on a banging brand new 2019 I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Miles, Jordan, oh yeah, let me get something real nice, something real proper, but of course, something real funky. All right, this is a brand new podcast. I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. As I said, my name is Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. the White Chocolate Tito, a.k.a. White Mike, a.k.a. Mr. New York, a.k.a. the White Arsenio Hall, a.k.a. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting. You are now rocking with the best. So much to discuss. Um... So much to discuss. The NFL playoffs, the Elite Eight, is here. It was a great weekend of wild card football. I was uh, surprised by some games, uh, not surprised by some other games. Um, it was competitive. Um, later on in the episode, the young shooter, Dean Collins, will be here to talk pop culture, talk Golden Globes. What we've seen, what we haven't seen, um, as far as films and television, the young shooter is very uh, astute film watcher. The the thing that I watched over the weekend, last three or four days, it's been on, is this Lifetime Network R. Kelly documentary um, called "Surviving R. Kelly" uh, about the sexual, serial sexual abuse that has been going down with R. Kelly for fucking, I don't even, since sometime in the 90s. I, 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 you know, I don't fact check, I don't date check, but I mean like 90, I don't remember when Aaliyah came out, I don't remember when R. Kelly came out, but we're, we're talking about close to 30 years of being a nasty, sick, predatorial, dirty, greasy shitbag. R. Kelly is a true blue shitbag. Um, and this documentary, if if let's just say, let's just say, let's just say, I'm not being an apologist. Let's just say 5%. Let's just say 5% of what was articulated from victims and survivors uh i they're they're i was thinking about why are they calling themselves survivors because they survived um these assaults and I, I guess that makes sense and they can call themselves whatever they went through these assaults uh these uh, manipulations this sexual abuse this uh, mental abuse predatorial shit on young girls as old as 15 when this guy's fucking 20s 30s he's a scum bag. R. Kelly is a shit bag. These survivors, if 5%, only 5%, and again, I'm not, uh, I believe all of them, but if only 5% of it is true, he should be locked up for life. No bullshit. It's, It's astonishing. It's six hours, and it's one survivor after another survivor, after another survivor, after parents of survivors, parents who to this day haven't seen their kids in three years. It's like, you know, it's fucking crazy because the documentary that I was uh, tripped out by last year, Netflix documentary, Wild Wild West, uh, about the dude in Oregon 
who created the whole sex cult. Yo, this dude has created a cult. He's abusing women physically, emotionally, sexually, degrading them, not feeding them. It, it, you know, it, I, I recommend everybody to watch it because, so you should be aware of what kind of people are out there um, and what kind of person R. Kelly is. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, it, it's not easy to watch. It's not easy to stomach. And you're just like, what the fuck, man? How could this have been going on for so long? How could this, how could this guy be plain sight for so long? Um, the Aaliyah stuff, kind of like, oh, that was like, I don't know, man. It, the whole thing, like, he was married to Aaliyah when she was 15. He somehow got documents forged that she was 18. And then it was just one after another, after another, after another, after another. And he's preying on these girls and they're f- fucking kids, man. He's a shitbag. He is a true... I, I, it, it's crazy. So um, I definitely recommend you watch it. But just just know going into it that the Lifetime um, documentary on R. Kelly is not for the faint of heart in terms of... It's It's disturbing. It's disturbing, and and there's so much footage, and there's so many uh, people sharing their firsthand accounts of what they've been through, and it's one after another after another up until real time. Like I think the last case that they talk about is like November, like you know, because obviously they had to edit the film and then get it out there. But it's like November of 2018. This a mother and father who he had been preying on their daughter since he was 17. They haven't seen him, seen her since for the last three years. <clears throat> Trying to track her down. They know she's with him. She won't say she's being he- held against her will at this point. It, it's fucked up. It is some fucked up shit. Um, I recommend watching it, but once again, it, 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 there's nothing feel good about it. Um, and they're not on the other side of it because it's happening right now, like as we speak. And And the crazy shit is... This fucking shitbag has a million followers on Twitter um, and like a million followers on the, he still has people that follow. No one should be following this motherfucker. He's a, he's a criminal. He's a, the wonder bread bag and olive oil treatment poster boy. He, he's going to get locked up and they're going to be all up in his ass with that good wonder bread bag and that good olive oil. Uh, so I watched that over the weekend, and uh, it's it's disturbing. The NFL playoffs are set. And I have a confession to make about where I am at with the NFL playoffs. Uh, we all saw the fucking Philadelphia Eagles get lucky. Um, that poor field goal kicker has been taking the, the blame the Chicago Bears field goal kicker, Cody Parker, or Parker Cody. I don't know. Anybody with two first names, I'm always like, ah, that's you're not Jewish. Um, no disrespect. No disrespect. Uh, but that's just so foreign to me. Uh, and growing up, I never knew anybody with two first names. A lot of field goal kickers have that that kind of name. Those, those, those names like that. Um, but uh, first of all, that field goal kicker, after he was booed and maligned and fucking ran out of Chicago and you suck and k- terrible things were being said to him. As they should be, fans, that's what they're going to say. The fucking field goal was was deflected by a Philadelphia Eagle. Uh, that doesn't change the fact that the guy essentially lost the game for the Bears, um, who, I were rooting, who I was rooting for, who I were rooting for. I don't speak English properly. Who I was rooting for. Uh, but field goal kickers with two last names that miss field goals uh, in wild card games, uh, it's hard to bounce back from that. But now we have the Eagles going to New Orleans to play the Saints. My guy Sean Payton, Alvin Kamara, and that crew. I expect the Saints to beat the shit out of Slick Dick Nick Foles and the Eagles. I expect them to beat their ass. I want them to beat their ass. I want the the Saints to be in the playoffs. I want Sean Payton to be in the fucking Super Bowl after last year's miracle in Minnesota or whatever they were calling it. I, I, I don't give a shit about the Seahawks, and I'm not a Cowboys fan, but I like Ezekiel Elliott. He helped bring me to championship 
to the to the chip in fantasy football. I want to see Dak do well, but I got the Rams beating their ass. Jared Goff, friend of the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast, Todd Gurley, Adamican Sue, Darnold, that whole crew. They're an LA team. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Los Angeles. I got the Rams. The Patriots and the Chargers. Well, I'm going to get to that. The Chiefs versus the Colts. The Colts are peaking at the right time. Under the radar versus Patrick Mahomes and those guys. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. We know all about them. They're badasses. I think, I think the Colts are going to upset Patrick Mahomes and the fucking Chiefs. That's my prediction on that game. And then I have to admit this. Julian Edelman, my man, you have fucked up my entire psyche with the Patriots. I believe you are a double agent. Okay, we need to have a talk. Julian Edelman. I am rooting for the Patriots to beat the Chargers in this game. I know we went, what the fuck just came out of your mouth? I'll explain. Somehow, some way, I feel like right now, right now, the Patriots are some sort of underdog. Uh, Tom Brady doesn't have it. Julian Edelman doesn't have it. Uh, they're this, they're that. They were 11 and 5. They don't look like themselves. Gronkowski, somehow, some way, the Patriots, the way they've been portrayed by the media, is that they, they, they don't have it. They snuck into the playoffs, they snuck into the. Um, the, the bye week, all this bullshit. Um, I'm rooting for the Patriots. I know. I fuck with Phillip Rivers. Melly Melvin Gordon is he's one of my he's one of my favorite football players, one of my favorite fantasy football players. I love him. I know they're in Los Angeles. I, I still believe the San Diego Chargers are the San Diego Chargers. Okay. To me, they're not the Los Angeles Chargers. No one shows up to their games. Uh, that are true blue Chargers fans. It's fucked up. They're better on the road because they don't have a fan base in Los Angeles. And I'm rooting for the Patriots. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to sit here in front. Now, in the next round, uh, I, I don't know if I'll feel the same way, but I, I'm so not emotionally involved. The only team I want to see uh, uh, really win this week is the Rams versus the Cowboys and the Saints to beat the shit out of the Eagles. And when I was looking at these other games, I have to admit, I'm going to be honest, that I am rooting for the Patriots to beat the Chargers. It's fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. Uh, but I can't wait for these games. They kick off uh, Saturday. And, of course, Sunday, it's uh, four games. There's four football games uh, this week. And then it becomes two football games. And then we have a Super Bowl. I am Rappaport Podcast. I just want to uh, let everybody know, because I got a, a whole bunch of people that reached out to me. I'm feeling a lot better since uh, the last episode where I talked about fainting and falling out in my crib. Um, I appreciate all the uh, concern, all the texts, all the tweets, all the DMs. I'm good. Um, I'm, I'm paying really close attention to how I'm feeling, how I'm feeling when I'm getting up. Um, I, I, you know, I talked about it, but I just want to let everybody know that I am feeling, I'm feeling good since that happened and I've worked out, um, uh, and, uh, my head is, to be honest with you, still a little bit sore, uh, but I am, you know, seeing the doctor and I am, I'm taking care of myself. Um, so do not worry. Have no fear. The gringo man dingo is here. I don't take that stuff lightly. I don't make light of it. And, um, I don't want anybody to, to worry about me um and uh like that anyway um so this kevin hart oscars lgbtq uh beef is continuing if you haven't been living uh in iraq under a rock or in iraq who the fuck knows these days you could actually live in a fucking rock that that could that's a real option Kevin Rock, Kevin Rock, Kevin Hart was set to host the Oscars, and then there was a whole bunch of backlash because of tweets and comments he made in an interview about uh, his son being gay and what he would do if his son was gay, 
and a couple of, uh, I think, whatever the fuck it was, tweets, whatever. He apologized before the Oscars approached him. He apologized afterwards, um, and then he went on the Ellen DeGeneres show, um, and, and they talked about that. They talked about his new movie coming up uh, with Brian Cranston, which I don't know the name of because this is the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, and we don't fact check, and that's not what I'm here to discuss is the new movie with Brian Cranston. I'm sure it's great. They're both great, yada, yada, yada. But he went on Ellen DeGeneres, and Ellen DeGeneres, who knows if this was set up or not? Who knows if she told him she was going to bring it up? Who knows? You never know how these fucking things are going to work out. When you, when you go on a talk show, okay, and I've been doing talk shows for 20-something years. I did it all. Letterman, Conan when he was on CBS, fucking Arsenio. Or the, re, the I've done them all. Fucking all of them. Okay? But what happens before you go on a talk show, especially when you're a star like Kevin Hart, it's all manufactured. They discuss what they're going to discuss. I mean, you know, you're coming with, up with things off the cuff, but it's all pre-planned. It's live fucking television. You can't go out there without a plan. So I don't know if it was if she told him what she was going to do or, or, or not, but Ellen DeGeneres brought up the whole thing, and she said, I think you should host the Oscars. I believe your apology. I, I, I accept your apology. Um, and, and I think it would be a good thing. I spoke to the Academy and, and they would have you back. And Kevin Hart, uh, didn't say whether or not he would do it or not. Miles Jordan, play a little clip from this shit. You have said a lot of amazing things. You have put a lot of things on my mind and I know where our relationship stands. So leaving here, I'm, I'm promising you, I'm evaluating this conversation. This is a, this is a conversation I needed to have. I'm glad that I had it here, and I'm glad that it was as authentic and real as I could have hoped that it would be. So let me assess just just to sit in the space and, and really think, and okay. you and I will talk before anything else. Okay. Okay? Okay. That's my deal. Okay, so he essentially apologized again. Ellen DeGeneres said she was cool with it. A lot of people said we were cool with it. But, but, but it, it just wasn't good enough, again, to some people. Some people, and a lot of people from the LGBTQ community, and just because you're gay, lesbian, transsexual, doesn't mean you're right. Doesn't mean your opinion um, is etched in stone. It's your opinion. You know, you, you know just like, uh, well, the, some people from the LGBTQ community didn't accept his apology. Well, then that's some people. And that's just some people on Twitter. So what do, what do we do with Kevin Hart now? You, you, you're not happy with it. Don Lemon from CNN saying this and that, why his apology is unacceptable. This other guy, D-Ray, who's a, an activist, big social media person, black dude also. He doesn't accept the apology. Well, then, well then why, don't you, why don't you, let's publicly castrate Kevin Hart. That's what we need to do. Teach this motherfucker and everybody else a lesson going forward. You don't say anything in your apology. Nah, it's not good enough. We're cutting that dick off. And we're going to do it in public. Or let's put this fucking guy, Kevin Hart, in solitary confinement for 10 years. That'll fucking teach him. Keep him away from his wife and kids. That'll teach him. No apology is good enough. Your wording, your phrasing of your apology. You didn't cry when you apologized, Kevin Hart. So we need to put you in solitary confinement, no contact with your, your wife and kids for 10 fucking years. Kevin Hart, if you're listening, and he might be, I know Kevin Hart. I was in his very first movie. Well, he, he was in a movie that I was in, and it was his very first day of his very first movie. We had a conversation about it. Kevin Hart, if you're listening, I would, I would start telling these people to suck your fucking dick. Fuck the Academy Awards. Fuck them. Fuck hosting the Academy Awards. Fuck these fake, phony Hollywood do-gooders. These people present... If you watch the way Hollywood actors, actresses, producers, and directors talk to Ryan Seacrest... You know on the red carpet when they're greeting Ryan Seacrest or my man Mario Lopez? If you think that's how these people are in real life, all giggly and happy, and I'm just happy to be here. Hey, Ryan. And they're like, hey, the women, the guys, all of them. Phony bullshit. 
If you think that's how these charming motherfuckers are in real life, you are fooling yourself. I was watching the Golden Globes, which you're going to get to later, and when they talked to Ryan Seacrest on, on the red carpet, if people actually acted like that every single fucking day of their lives, they would nauseate themselves. That is the fu- red carpet behavior. I'm just here. I'm cl- glad to be around these other artists. Just happy to be here, Ryan. <laughs> What'd you? How was your new year? It was great. I saw you and the kids. I saw you guys posting pictures on Instagram. You were in Bali. Yeah, it was great. Get the fuck out of here. These, these are regular people. All these motherfuckers are moody, regular people. I don't give a fuck how successful you are. You could still be a dick. I, I'm speaking for it. I'm pretty fucking successful, and I'm a fucking asshole. These motherfuckers are so full of shit, and I'm going to make a vow, a vow, a, a pledge, something. When I get nominated for an award, and I will be nominated, when I go there the next time, rest assured I will be keeping it all the way funky. Now, I'm not going to be belligerent and make a fucking asshole of myself, but I will keep it all the way funky with these motherfuckers, all right? For you, for the listeners, trust me, When I, I don't go to these shows, I don't go to these parties because I'm not going until I'm nominated. Rest assured, when I go the next time, I will keep it all the way live. These motherfuckers have affectations in the way they speak. Rami Malek, I know this little motherfucker. He's a good actor. I know this little motherfucker from the war at home. Me and the young shooter know this motherfucker from... He got up there. He won that award. He was great as Freddie Mercury. I didn't really like the movie. Spoken on on this I Am Rap Stereo podcast. The Golden Globes are essentially a fucking joke. It's a Hollywood foreign press suck off. But he got up there with some affectation. Now, thank you. And he's like doing some weird... Like I'm like, my man, this ain't the way you talk, Duke. Rami Malek does it. I'm going to get him on the podcast. I'm going to get this motherfucker, Freddie Mercury, Rami Malek on the podcast. I'm going to get this fucking guy on the podcast. And you're going to hear that he don't talk like that. I'm going to be like, yo, Duke, I know him. I'm going to be like, yo, Duke, what's with the speech impediment thing you're doing? What's with this uh, artist? There's a lot of artists on Instagram. A lot of dope-ass painters, photographers. They're not to hold the artist, artist, artist. It's artist, artist. You're an actor. Yes, it's it's an art form. Yes, you're an artist. But stupid, stop jerking yourself. I just can't stand all that shit. It's so fucking pretentious to me. How did I even get on this? Oh, because Kevin Hart. Don't host the fucking Oscars. Sandra O oh and Andy Samberg were corny as fuck. You don't need to do it, Kevin Hart. Fuck that. You apologize. Fuck that bullshit. If your apology isn't good enough, D-Ray, suck a dick. Don Lemon, suck a dick. And anybody in the LGBTQ community that's still complaining because you don't think his apology was good enough, suck a dick too. You're not holy and righteous just because you're a part of the LGBTQ community. That doesn't make you holy and righteous. That just means you're part of the LGBTQ community. The people are like manipulating and using all this shit. Uh, to like hustle and con and push their own agendas and all that. Get the fuck out of here, man. This dude apologized. Don't discuss it anymore. It's a dead horse. Fuck that. I am Rappaport Podcast. On a uh, more serious note, and we have so many sick fucks. I mean, 2019 has started off with a bang and a flurry of sick fucks. Uh, so tomorrow's episode in prime time uh, will be inundated with uh, tons and tons and tons of uh, sick fucks. Uh, if you do not have a subscription to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Premium, why, number one, why? Um, number two, download the app, I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. It's two ninety nine dollars a month, Okay. You can't even get a fucking ice latte for $2.99. $2.99 a month, okay? Special videos, emergency episodes, and of course, the PPP primetime premium podcast that we drop whenever the fuck we want, uh, but consistently Wednesday evenings, early evenings, evenings West Coast. Um, but it's unpredictable. That could be another part. Premium primetime podcasting that are un 
predictable. Download the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast app. Two fucking ninety fucking nine. Okay. Oh, uh, but this case that has been going on for weeks now, uh, a couple of weeks now in Houston, this little girl Jasmine can't remember her last name. I'm not fact checking. It's been all over the news. A little black girl, seven years old, was in the car with her mom. Mother, uh, uh, they were ambushed or something like this. The crazy thing is that the, the young girl, seven years old, uh, was was killed. She was shot and killed in Houston. For some reason, which I'm still unclear of, witnesses were saying it was a white guy. So I have to be honest, first and foremost, it's a young girl. And everybody was like, prayers for, for uh, Jasmine, spelt with a, a, a Z. Little beautiful, a little seven-year-old girl. Uh, justice for Jasmine, as there should be. And the race is never an issue until race is an issue. The fact that it was uh, a white guy that shot a black girl added fuel to the fire. Again, this is about a seven-year-old girl that lost her life. But let's keep it fucking real here. The fact that it was a white guy that was uh, 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 somehow, some way mistaken for a black guy, and we're not talking about a light-skinned black guy because the guy who wound up doing it is a brown-skinned brother. Don't look half white, a quarter white, or any white. I'm still confused how the fuck uh, uh, this happened. I'm confused about the confusion. Um, there's been a manhunt for this person, probably because they've been looking for white dudes, and it was race, ra race was involved. Race is not an issue until race is an issue. And if and the sooner, I've said it once, I've said it a million times, the sooner we all come to terms with the fact, all of us, black, white, brown, red, green, yellow, purple, the sooner we come to terms and we acknowledge that we all have some sort of issues with race. We are not puritanical people. We all have prejudices. We all have preconceived notions. We've all been around people that think things, that say things, the sooner we acknowledge and stop trying to front on social media that we are puritanical people, the better. Acknowledge the shit. Acknowledge the fucking shit. There's no, like, this, is, this shit ain't going to get better until, pe until people stop fronting. All of us. All of us. Over the weekend, they said, uh, the case is taking a new direction. That's how they phrased the case is taking a new direction. But they but they were basically basically what they should have said is we thought there was a white guy that killed this little girl. It turns out it was a fucking black guy. We've been chasing white guys all over Houston and all over Texas for the last two weeks. And we should have been chasing a certain kind of black guy that fit this description. And the fervor and the uproar over it died down when it was a black guy shooting a black girl. And it and it shouldn't have. Justice for Jasmine means justice for Jasmine. I don't give a fuck if it was a white, black, Chinese, Asian. Doesn't make a fucking anything. Spanish. But backtrack all the social media, all the people that were pumping the shit, all the people that were posting it, all the people that were saying, oh, the so-called manhunt isn't really a manhunt. They're not really checking to find this guy. Well, turns out they were looking for the wrong kind of guy. And people were disappointed that it wasn't a white guy that shot this poor little black girl. That's the fucking facts. There were people that were disappointed that that wasn't the end result. And those people are sick. Sick fucks. This case wouldn't even made national attention had it been put out there that way. Race is not an issue until it's an issue. What else is going on? This, this case had got a lot of attention from a lot of celebrities. Rihanna. Kim Kardashian, everybody. Uh, this this girl, I, I know we talked about it on the podcast here, Sintoni, Sintonia Brown, uh, this girl who was put in jail for murder. There's a documentary on her. Young girl, uh, beautiful girl. Um, she's now 30. She's been in jail for 15 years, I think, or 14 years. Uh, she was had a fucked up life. You know, it was sex trafficking, as a young girl, was was abused, physically abused, sexually abused, raped. She wound up killing a guy that was abusing her, shooting him. Um, she did 15 years in jail. The story caught a lot of attention. Again, I, I, I believe Rihanna was the first person to talk about it. Um, I looked at the documentaries, just fucking heartbreaking. 
fucked up life, fucked up situation. She committed a crime. They tried to put her in jail for life. Um, she just got clemency. She's coming out of jail in August, and and she served her fucking time. And I'm glad, and I'm not exactly sure uh, how it went down, but the Tennessee governor has released this girl, um, and you should look it up. Look up her case. Look up her story. Sintonia Brown, C-Y-N-T-O-I-A. I'm probably not Sintona. I'm sorry I'm not pronouncing her name right, but you should look it up. C-Y-N-T-O-I-A Brown. There's a documentary about her. I know I saw it on YouTube, uh, but she just got uh, uh, granted clemency. Um, she's getting out of jail after serving 15 years for for killing a guy that was a, doing terrible things to her. I am Rappaport Podcast. Coming up later on the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, uh, the young shooter, uh, Dean Collins, will be here. Um, we're going to talk about being blessed. Um, I don't know if you follow uh, me on social media. He's always with me on social media. We met when we were doing the war at home. Um, he's a big part of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. But you should follow me on social. Do you like that voice there? I'm going to start doing that voice more. Um yeah, this is um, Mike Rapport, a.k.a. The Gringo Mandingo. This is my radio voice. Um, I'm so delicate. I'm so sensitive that sometimes my voice cracks. Um, but you should follow uh, me on social media. I, um, at Michael Rappaport. You could follow the podcast, at I Am Rappaport. What the fuck was I even talking about that? Oh, because the shooter's coming up. Oh, but the, the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, solo before uh, the shooter comes on is Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson, the, the little boy from Staten Island who cried wolf but won't apologize about it, out and about at the Golden Globes, partying it up with his best friend, Dr. Machine Gun Kelly, who vowed to take care of his friend Pete Davidson and vowed to uh, you know hang around and get him out of the darkness, which is great, 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 great. Yet Pete Davidson was courtside at a Denver Nuggets game and then hey, all out and about and apparently smoking weed, uh, which is, listen, I'm no doctor, but if you're bipolar and you have mental illness, uh, uh, accenting it uh, is probably not a great thing to do with weed. Um, if you're bipolar and you have suicidal tendencies, which based on Pete Davidson's history that we know about as fans, just fans, threatening to kill himself just weeks ago, you probably shouldn't be smoking weed. Again, I'm not a fucking doctor. I'm not a fucking doctor, but it just seems like smoking that good Cali, uh, which he was doing in videos with uh, Machine Gun Kelly, just doesn't seem like the best thing to do after recently threatening to take your own life away, which I'm not making light of. So many people on social media are, are now mental health experts. They know all about mental health, and uh, uh, and they, they're they defending Pete Davidson, and he's got mental issues and all stuff. Listen, so does the guy outside of your fucking local gas station. You walk right over him, but you run home to see Pete Davidson on Saturday Night Live. So does the woman who comes up to you half naked at a stoplight asking to squeegee your car, okay, with no water in your squeegee bucket talking to herself and looking deranged. You don't give her anything, but you sit on, on social media and you defend Pete Davidson. Listen, obviously this kid's got a problem. He, I don't think he should be smoking weed. If he truly has bipolar issues and he has mental illness, you shouldn't be accenting anything with any fucking weed, period. I don't give a fuck. He should be away getting help. If this kid just threatened to take his own life away three, two, three and a half weeks ago, we don't fact check. He should be in an ashram somewhere. He should be getting uh, uh, treated. He shouldn't be hanging out uh, at the Golden Globus party, smoking weed, uh, chasing, chasing Snapper, if he truly has this problem. But since he did threaten his life, in my opinion, he owes all of us, he owes all his fans, his young fans, all social media, all the mental health community that are truly suffering also an apology. That apology hasn't come. But you're out in the fucking world with Machine Gun Kelly like Machine Gun Kelly's... Listen, Machine Gun Kelly seems like he's a nice guy. He's not a dope rapper. Don't get it twisted, Pete Davidson. All right. I said what I could say. Okay? Done what I could do. 
Uh, my head is throbbing, okay? Talking loud and saying a whole bunch. Uh, coming up next on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, the young shooter, Dean Collins, will be here to break down the results of the Golden Globes. Miles Jordan, let me get some funky before we uh, bring in the shooter. Give me a test. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Okay. You don't have to count to ten. You could do three. All right. As mentioned, the young shooter, Dean Collins, is back on the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. I'm working on some new voices for 2019. Welcome, Dean. Oh, Welcome to you. the show. I never know when to come in, you know, because you go, Dean Collins is back on the I Am Rappaport. So I'm like, I don't know what my pocket is to say. Thank you, Michael, for having me. That's... That's good. Okay, thank you. That, for that's having no, me. that's good to think twice. I'm I, always like waiting for it, but then you continue to introduce. No know. problem. You got to figure it. out that opening. Um, it's as been I a said, long time. It's I been a been long here. time. It's been a long time that you've been on the podcast. Yeah, I haven't gotten a call for about a month or two. That's all right. That's all right. I, you know, we want to keep. Uh, we we want Which less. Is weird, more. but let's. We, yeah, want, let's we want to do a less is more thing. So just. Okay. We're going to do a less is more thing. And we were been sorting out a sick fox and all that sort of thing. and all that sort of thing. But. Uh, more pressing, um, Golden Globes. What you've seen? You're sort of our pop culture yes. culture critic. Yes, I like to think of myself as a, as a culture critic. Some people actually call they, me. Col- uh, they say, "Hey, yo, culture critic." But but people people like actually have that as a term. Like when they're like, "What do you do for a living?" Oh, I'm a culture critic. That's yeah, like being. I'm a, oh, I'm an I'm, a, I'm an influencer. I'm gonna change my bio to to influencer slash culture critic slash everyday guy. That that would be good. Um, so you watched the Golden Globes. I watched the Golden Globes. I didn't watch them with you. I did. Um, what, what do you want to, you've been chomping at the bit about a potential beef that's going on. You oh, saw. I, I do think that there is a beef. Um, you know, I, I don't know if anyone caught it, but. No, you're um, breaking this, this, this story. Is this break? Oh, okay. I didn't realize. Okay. So I'm breaking this story. I guess, you know, I don't know. There's no video here, but I wish we could play the clip of what happened. But, um, there was some beef that I saw when Patricia Arquette one for Escape from Dan Mora for Best Actress. As she was walking out, she gave her friend uh, and and um, the, the rest of the table hug and a kiss as they said, oh, Patricia Arquette. And then as, and Lady Gaga, you could see, is looking at her from her, her seat going, oh, oh, you know, and she goes, oh, congratulations. And and Patricia Arquette looks at her and then just keeps walking, doesn't Gives give her, her a nothing. hug, shuns her. You caught this video. You've been the one who put this out there. yes. Yes. No one else. I haven't heard anything about this. Yes. Uh, let's just say I put the video out. This there. is kind of. This is sort of like Pusha T and Drake of 2019 already. I don't even know what that means. Okay. See, I, I should kick you off the podcast for that. I don't. I, it's like I don't, you don't know about the Pusha T every... Drake beef last year. No, man. I know you have you're no the guy. idea what I mean. You, no. you never heard. Okay. Pusha T. I didn't realize was in some beef with Drake. Okay. Okay. So go ahead. Stay focused. Stay focused. Anyway, so I just you could catch the video online. Maybe I'll post it. You'll post it. Whatever you want. You could see it. Um. And then Gaga is like, as Patricia Arquette walks to the stage, Gaga's in shock that she didn't give her a kiss and or a hug like, or acknowledge her. Looking at her like, excuse me. Anyway, I caught that. That was um, one of the highlights because I watched it kind of, sort of against my will. The Golden Globes. I, I could it's give, hard to watch the whole. It's, I could give a fuck about the Golden Globes. Well, Let me just well, what say is that. it about the Golden Globes that you can give a fuck about? Like, what what is it about? Well, it's the, it's the Hollywood Foreign Press is the one that. And it, try to explain why we're sort of like it's a joke. What well, can you explain it? Well, because it's your the, podcast. The, the, the thing the thing about it that I know about the Hollywood Foreign Press and they're super fucking totally nice people i've met them i've done press junkets with them but yes. the thing that they always tell here's the thing the thing why it's kind of not taken seriously is because actors from tv shows they like to meet and greet the actors yeah. and and they always say be nice to the hollywood foreign press be nice to the hollywood foreign yeah. press so you can be incredible in a show but if you're a dick yeah, to they, the hollywood foreign press or not any. nice to them like they won't nominate you that's the thing why Hollywood, why actors, actresses, and directors and producers are kind of like, it's great to get nominated, it's great to win an award, but it's kind of like this, I don't want to say rigged, but it is, it's, it has a popularity contest, truly, element to it. Isn't it like there's like 15 old people that... No, there's more than, there, there's a bunch of There's a of lot them. of people. There's a bunch of them, but All right, well, they, they want to schmooze with you, they want to hang out with you, they want to like, and if you're cool with them and nice to them, 
Yeah. They'll nominate you. Um, and, so some and, people, you know, they suck that corporate dick. They suck that 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 foreign corporate dick. Foreign corporate dick where they do the interviews. They're, they're on their best behavior. I don't mind doing the interviews That's and fine. being on your best behavior, but do we need to do anything beyond that? I'm not... I'm not going to eat with you. I'm not having high tea with you. Yeah. Um, because if you really want to be around me, uh, Michael Rapport, for the yeah. high tea and the eating, you're going to see snorting. You're going to see nose picking. There's going to be burping. You're going to see all that within the first three seconds I of can, shaking I, your hand. Right. So if it's anything beyond just the interview, introduction, we're not going to jive together. They've been always cool with me. But with maybe which is why we haven't gotten that win or nomination because, potentially. Be, which which brings me to yeah, the first award of the night which was best actor in a comedy and it was Michael Douglas yeah. uh, versus uh, uh Sasha Baron Cohen um and who else was in this category? This is best actor in a comedic television show. It was Sasha Baron Cohen, Michael Douglas. Yeah. He's a fucking icon. His body of I work, love it. I love that he's like in in this comedy that he's getting nominated for. It's comedy. not it's 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 that a good show funny. on Netflix. It's called The Kaminsky Method. Mm, I heard but about his it. performance is not in the stratosphere of Sasha Baron Cohen on This is America. Oh, right, right. Not even in this stratosphere. No, so who ended up winning? Michael Douglas. And again, it's like he's an icon. He's one best actor. He, you know, that Michael Douglas produced One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. That's crazy. I actually did not know. He's that. one of the first actors to produce while Damn. they were like an actor. Like he produced that shit. That's dope. That's, so like that's a, he can do no wrong. I mean, he's Michael fucking Douglas. But in the Kaminsky Method, which is a good show, yeah, he, in my opinion, didn't deserve to win best actor in a, a, a comedy television show. Kaminsky Let me just say he's good. Alan Arkin, Michael Douglas, I, I, Chuck Lorre, who created uh, Two and a Half Men and fucking The Big Bang Theory. The guy must be so rich. I just want to say this, and, and I'm not saying I'm solely responsible. Kaminsky Method, in my opinion, uh, not necessarily a better show. Not saying that we're better, but I'm saying atypical we didn't get not one nomination. And maybe not say for me, Jennifer Jason Lee, but what about my girl? Uh, what about Bridget? She killed. Killed it. Killed it. Kier killed it. Killed it. What about one of them? Give them a fucking nomination. Give them a nomination. Yeah. So I'm just saying, hey, listen, these things are never, they're never totally right. They're and, politics, and it, bro. The, the, it's like, it doesn't matter. You're saying, I, I can't believe, you know, Michael Douglas won over Sasha Bear. It's like, who cares? It, it, it means not, this one especially, though. You know, when other actors but they all, they uh, vote all on it. They all sort of have this flawed thing. It's so it's so stupid. But I, you know what? I say fuck you out of the Golden Globes for giving that uh, award to Glenn Close over Gaga. Loved it. I thought that Loved was... Loved it. Lady Gaga, she thinks and she thought she's winning all the awards. I mean, she looked... Like her heart stopped when I mean it looked Lady Gaga for a Star is Born. They've been trying to push her as best actress. Oh, she thought she was a shoe in that night. Bradley Cooper, best actor. Lady Gaga's the you know best actress. And when Glenn Close won, and she, even she was shocked. Who I heard Glenn Close was incredible. She was. I didn't see it. She was. She's always. I mean, Glenn Close is like Meryl Streep. Glenn yeah, I mean, Close. Glenn Close is OG. She's sick. She's been around forever. But she's, she's iconic. Sick. She's a fuck, and she looks great. Glenn Close looks fucking dope. She looks great. I don't know how old she is, but she looks fucking great. I've seen her at the sushi place. She looks great in real life. She looked great at the Golden Globes. Glenn Close, if you're listening, DM Michael. No, I'm married, bro. Oh, right. Sorry, I'm married. Um, but I, I see her at sushi. I give her away. Uh, she's like, got to be like 78 now. She looked. She looks fucking ridiculously good for whatever age she is. She looks, she just looks classy for her yes. age and looks beautiful. Shout out to Glenn Close. And I just wish that they- And, and, and shout out to the Golden Globes for not giving yeah. the award to Lady Gaga because Lady Gaga won for best song. Yes. And she was so over her over the top yeah. for her, her, her speech for best song. Imagine if she won best actress. She'd still be up there talking. Well, she did that for America. I, I, she was fine in that movie. She wasn't. She wasn't all that. I could pick through other performances that people that she sh that should have gotten nominated over fucking Lady Gaga. I just. It's I just, a totally I contrived that. thing. I love that they didn't uh, give it to her. And I and and you know how usually they have cameras 
Um, on the losers, I wish that she they had a camera just placed right on Gaga when they announced Glenn Close because you got a snippet of it, and and her face looked like like Botox per, just permanently in her face, like it wasn't moving, but you could see in her eyes that, that there was like a dead soul inside, like there was nothing there. And I, 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 I I'm a fan of Lady Gaga, but it's like you yeah, she take did great. yourself way too fucking seriously, lady. So I like that about the Golden Globes. Way too fucking seriously. She, she lady even Gaga. had a personal, her, I think her personal handler was holding uh, her, her was her, holding her dress. I want to know the how much. Fuck out of here, man! How Give much me is a, she getting paid? Oh, I'll take cares? that job. It's all you take yourself way too seriously. Yeah. You're talented. You're dope. You're 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 all these. Calm the fuck down. Right. Glenn Close won. You didn't. I like that. You didn't win. I like that. That's what I liked about it. Um, what what did you think of Andy Samberg and Sandra O oh as hosts? I thought they were fucking the beginning with the. All the 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 white men jokes and uh, oh my god, me two times two and and all the all all I, like again, I come here to to have the awards, see some bits. Um, I don't care about your personal stuff. Leave um, politics out. We do it please. all on Twitter, please. Well, all day, all of every fucking day. I'm sick of you doing it. I'm and, like, and, leave and it also, out. And also, and also, if we're gonna do the politics, can there be some diversity in the politics? Like yeah. maybe they maybe there's a Trump supporter in the audience. Let him get up there. No, no, no. But that, why not? That's not allowed, bro. I, I I can't stand the motherfucker, but if you go up there and say, you know what, I think Trump is doing a good job, will you get booed? Mm. There would be headlines every The next day, there'd be headlines. <laughs> but that's not fair. That's not fair. And I can't you. stand dick stain Donald Trump. I coined the phrase. But I, yeah. I coined the phrase, dick stain Donald Trump. I did that. That's That came from the bottom of my heart. You You did coin that. I did that. I mean, if you want to tell everyone again, just they make know, sure. Everybody knows that when, you, when it comes to Dick St. Donald Trump, I'm that dude. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, so so what, what else did you think of the show? Any takeaways? What other takeaways did you have from the show? Oh, what other takeaways? That's a great question. What other uh, takeaways? Okay. Um, fuck, man. I don't know. What other takeaways did you have? Uh, I, I don't. That's, I could. I, that's it. I talked about it earlier. Um, yeah. Pete Davidson um, was was there with yes. Machine Gun Kelly, the rapper Machine Gun oh, Kelly. Oh, was that who was in the elevator or whatever? Yeah, him and Machine okay. Gun Kelly. Uh, they were out, and apparently he was yes. flirting with Kate Beckinsale. Who, wait, first which of all. Which is good. First of all, I know we what? don't fact check, but please get her name right. She's a beautiful woman. What's her name? Her name is Kate Beckinsale. Nah, it's Beckinsale. It's not Beckinsale. Nah, it's Beckinsale, Duke. No, I'll make yeah. like a $500 bet with you. It, Beckinsale uh, is what I call her. Okay. I don't even know who she is. She's an actress. I know she's, she's a an good act actress. What has she been in? Um, yeah, she's so good. She's, she's nothing in, uh, imprinted. You, with the um, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> she's, she's in so that like, vampire movie thing. Uh, what is it? I know like she's a good. Helsing I know she's type. good. She's, she was good in Snow Angels. She's skinny. She's good. I know who she is. No, she's a good actor. I already talked about fucking pistol. Okay, Pete. what about her? I already no, but David, like, I just I my whole thing is is that you threatened to take your life on social media. Now you're out and about. I, I this is where you and I are going to get into a big disagreement. Hey, but I said this. This okay, is my ahead, this I'm is listening. my simple thing. You 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 threaten to do that. You, you now you're out and about, but but you haven't acknowledged. Yo, I'm sorry if I scared anybody. I don't think you need to acknowledge. I'm sorry if I scared anybody. I, I disagree with you on this, and and that's what's going to be good about the podcast. Why is there a debate? I don't know. I just don't think. I think somebody with mental illness, which I still agree. You know, I think he's probably a dude that's bipolar. You Do don't you think it's know. good to be at the Golden Globes smoking weed? Do you think weed's good for bipolar or mental illness? Look, everyone being out and about. Everyone's gonna everyone's gonna self medicate the way they do. Mm -hmm. Whatever the guy's in a public eye, mm -hmm. um, he's gonna continue living his life. I don't think he's got a. I'm living my best life. I don't think he's got to feed into the tabloids and say, oh, well, two weeks ago I said this. And blah, but he, he did he's it in the tabloids. He did it on social media. What did he do? He was on oh, he social said, media saying what he said, yes. which I don't make light of. But I just think, like, an igno like, check this out. I hurt myself last week, right? Yeah. I wouldn't, like, I didn't post anything from the hospital, like, with me yeah. with a fucking gurney and all that shit, because I wouldn't want anyone to be nervous. After yeah. I was good, after I knew I was safe... Then I, I came on the podcast and I posted a picture of it. But imagine I just... But it's more shameful when somebody's talking about taking their own life or whatever. I it understand like that. that. But no, but my point is, is that I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't want to alarm my mom, yeah. my friends, the, the fans, yes. the listeners, the people that don't like me, the people that do like me. I wouldn't want to be like, yo, you're in a fucking neck brace in the hospital and then not say anything about it. 
So I came on the podcast. I told about what happened. I posted a picture and I said, I'm fine. I'm good. But if I put that out there, like, yo, I'm in the emergency room and neck brace, people are going to be like, what the fuck yeah, happened? What happened? That's I'm being selfish and not thinking and like that's being an alarmist. Somebody, every, I think everybody is welcome in the media to ask him, hey, what happened? What's the deal with last week? What do you have to say about that whole thing that happened last week? And he can answer it. You're like, you're, you're open to answer it or not answer it, but you don't have to make a public to well, do before the Golden it? Globes. What about apologizing to the, the, the he NYPD? Need, he didn't, he didn't, New York Police Department went to Saturday Night Live because they this this is a threat against your life. That's a crime. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. I we, disagree on the whole subject. I won that debate. Uh, sure, you won it. I won, you I won, won it. that debate. I say let the guy. Do, you keep. We keep feeding into him, everyone's personal life. Mm-hmm. Let the guy live. Who cares? Okay. No That's problem. what my take is. Okay. Um. I agree. I. I just. You know. I'm. Uh, no, you I, don't agree. I. No, I don't agree. I don't agree. <laughs> you no, don't I say agree. let the guy live, but I'm saying yes. I just think it would be respectful. Yes. To the to the people that you frightened to acknowledge you're doing better now. Like, isn't the dude not on Twitter, not on social media anymore? All that shit, bro. Let me tell you something. Not everything. Needs Nobody's to be shared. Not- People that even say they're not on Twitter, they're not on social media, they're, they're on, on Twitter it. and social media. They're looking at it. Yeah, even if they have sub accounts. And when they do a detox, it's like a nice two day. I deleted my Instagram. Yeah, I, I deleted it. And it. I'm just, I'm refreshing and regrouping. Yes. I'm recharging. Yes, recharging. Um, yes. What have you seen? Did you see Bird Box? I did see Bird Box. I thought it was. It was like uh, like a total, at least the poster in the campaign was a total ripoff of A Quiet Place. Which was written. Which was the John Krasinski movie with, with Emily uh, Blunt. With Kate, uh, no, nope, Kate Emily Blunt. Don't right. start. I, I, I see, really, Emily Blunt and Kate Beckinsale, to me, they're like similar. Uh, Similar looks? Yeah, like kind of pretty. Yeah, and they're both in like some good stuff. I mean, Emily Blunt is great, but. Yes. I, I really don't want you. I didn't is, like that I movie. Which one? Quiet, quiet place. place. Yeah, I didn't. I honestly didn't really like it. Either. It was. You know why? Why? It's too quiet. It was quiet. Ha! It was quiet. Fuck. Um, it was quiet. But Bird Box had some cool moments, but it was just. First of all, I heard Bird Box was higher grossing than Black Panther for wow. Netflix. I heard it's. I heard it's like one of Netflix. Biggest no, it is. It is the biggest thing on Netflix. It's is it the, the biggest, biggest the thing? highest, the most watched? It's not grossing. Or they, yeah, not grossing, but it's the but most they don't, watched thing on Netflix. But I don't know how they they don't did, announce their they you don't know, and they also don't. It doesn't mean like more subscriptions came in or not yeah. or just the. I, I don't know how the fuck it works. What the business model is there? Um, you work for Netflix, I, bro. I, yeah, but I leave that up to Tom. Who 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 the fuck is Tom? Tom is the head of Netflix. Have you met Tom? Yes, love him. But was it? He's like a the cer- one who produced the De Niro, Pesci, Al Pacino movie that's coming out. The Irishman. Irishman. 2019. So he personally, produ- you saying it's Netflix, coming out on that, Netflix? That's a Netflix film that's right. coming out in the theaters, which I'm going to see day one, yes. screening one. Me too. And probably day one screening two. What like if, I'm going to if, see that, going to see that shit back to back. I don't give a fuck where I am. No, but what if you're super disappointed with screening one? It's just you couldn't believe this is what it amounted to. Um, are you going to that the, double the stocks, screening? The stocks and the the statistics. And I don't fact check or stat check, but the the statistics on De Niro, Scorsese, and the statistics specifically on De Niro, Scorsese, Pacino are saying that's highly unlikely that it's not going to be at okay. least really, I, I'm really, really hoping. good. And I also and, just want the statistics on Scorsese doing gangster films are again, yes. It's it, the prediction is I have to say highly unlikely. Okay, and you also said that you don't fact check and you don't stack check yes correct that's right okay because this is sort of i'm just going to turn it into like a sort of like a little interview i just wanted to go f- oh you're interviewing me no i just wanted to f- oh you yeah, can I interview guess you me call it, i guess you could call it an interview because i, I just do wa- a lot of the interviewing on this show yes and a lot of the talking and, I, and a lot of times i'm more uh interesting than the person i'm interviewing no disrespect to the people i'm interviewing <laughs> okay i'm just fucking around <laughs> okay yeah, yeah okay no miles jordan cut that whole uh, <laughs> i'm just fucking around part <laughs> Okay, and uh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Keep okay. it all in, Miles. You so, fuck. Uh, so, so I just oh, wanted. Oh man, that was fucking funny, man. I just wanted to rewind Holy really quick. Shit, that made me laugh, boy. I just wanted Woo! to rewind really quick, bro. Go ahead, get, interview um, me, bro. So yes. you said yes. you said that you don't fact check and you don't stat check. Hell no, right? That that's right. But I think that might be a little 
hypocritical. Why? Because I think that you're, I mean, every time I'm on Instagram, you're posting these graphs of how uh, the Rappaport Fantasy League, you you won over That's these That's fantasy points, football, asshole. But you're stat checking on it. Dean. I just wanted you're, to ask you're, you about. You're, you're, this is, this is, uh, now the fans are going to be like, kick him off. No, I just wanted no, to no, know because, about your because, own rules. Number one, you didn't know about the Drake Pusha T beef. And then the fact that you're asking about fantasy football, you, you, Why you do I have to know about the Drake Pusha T beef? Why do I have to know about it? The fact that you, it? you don't have to know the details, but that's the first time you heard about it was now. Yes. That's the problem. And then, you know what, Paul? And you know what, Dean? Because, Paul. But no, because I was going into the Polly Walnuts thing. Because the Polly Walnuts. I know Walnuts Paulie Walnuts. Now you now, do. Dude. Now you do. Now you fucking yeah. know. But that was the first time you almost got kicked off. And I'm going to tell you right yeah, now. Yeah, what? what? I'm, anybody, listen, you know where to follow me on social media. You could DM me at Michael Rappaport. Don't you fucking can plug your you shit. You can DM Dean Collins at Dean Collins. Or you could email us up at IamRappaportPodcast at gmail.com and say, should the young shooter now Yo, be suspended for two more you, weeks dude. for not knowing about the Pusha T Drake beat? Don't, never have hearing, hearing of it before. Don't stop the podcast on that moment either. I'm not stopping. Good. We're still going. We're still going. Good. I want to keep going because because I'm just telling the you the Drake fans are going to be like, yo, thing. why don't you? Why is this fucking guy on the podcast? Okay, bro. Like I know about Drake. Don't bro me, dude. Okay, I just don't bro me, bro. bro. No, don't fucking bro me, don't bro. Don't fucking bro me, bro. Seriously, dude. Don't, don't bro me. Okay, I knew all about Drake and his mother. Like I know about his what? mom. What? What are you like? Talking? I know all about okay, this shit, man. dude. But okay, I can't let's follow just move every forward. fucking week. It's in the it. people's. It's in the people's court now. If they say they want you suspended, unfortunately, ah, that's gonna be it, man. It already feels like I've been suspended. I get a call every every two months. Fuck it. F let's let's find out, guys. Should should the young shooter Dean be suspended? That's a cool voice. You? That's a cool voice. You hey, just let's find out, everybody. You got a good you got a good radio voice. Thank you. I've heard that a lot, actually. Thank you, man. Don't you think that if the world yeah acted is happy to see Ryan Seacrest as they were happy to see uh, their neighbors yeah. uh, and the people that they live by and live next to, that the world would be a better place. Have you ever seen such kind of giggly bullshit when celebrities run into fucking Ryan Seacrest and his fucking overly bleached he's, veneer teeth? He's got perfect hair. He's got perfect skin. Um, perfect teeth. He's a guy that I sort of want to look like. I guarantee you he hasn't had a fucking steak or a cheeseburger in years. That guy has not have a, had a cavity, I don't think, ever. No, no. And if he did, he got him drilled out with those fucking I, veneers. Anyway, and, he, and he's got, he, he dates the hottest women. Does he date a lot of chicks? Yeah. I didn't know. I thought he was married or something. I mean, you know the stick man Hall Is of Fame. Is he stick man? You, he, he's one Is of he those, putting it down? He's one of those like, oh, that dude's gay. That dude's gay. Like, you think he's gay? And no, I'm not disrespecting No disrespect. Anything. No, no. I'm you're just saying, saying you like, think oh, he's gay. gay. That was, there were rumors about Homosexual. It. But then there were all these photos of him walking on the beach with like supermodels, like different ones every day. He puts day. it down. I would say he laid the pipe. Lays. Okay. Okay. Lays his now, pipe. Now, people are going to ask uh, with this segue, what about um, you and that space light, bro? Have oh, you been sorry. whipping out that space light? Uh, you just moved? I just moved into a new Have place. Have you whipped out that space light? I, I haven't even... I haven't even dusted that space light off. It's 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 collecting a little bit of dust right now. I'm Why? just gonna keep it real, bro. Why you, you've it's come on moving. here and like you're? I've been moving and shit. Um, you haven't been, but but you you've been moving, but you haven't been sticking moving. I haven't. I have not been stuffing. I have a couple of people uh, lined up for a date next week to kind of get back out there. How many date? How many people? Just like two people. Just you know, <laughs> casual dating. Okay. Um, casual but, dating. Yeah, casual dating. But, you know, I needed a little, I needed a chill break, man. You know, I'm just kind of doing me, moving into my own place and and uh, get my life together. Um, I'm going to be fucking 29 come May. 20 so. fucking nine. When's your come birthday? Come May. When's your birthday? I'm still 28. When's May 30th. I just said May. May 30th. I'm drinking coffee for the first time. Like, oh. I, I've been sipping it during this podcast and it's kind of, it's sort of jacking me up. I, I, sort of how does coffee have, like resonate with you? Does it, do you feel the jack up? I'll tell you, coffee makes my stomach so fucked. I ah, I go to coffee. You got whenever, juice stomach. Whenever I'm constipated, whenever I I need to just let that out. Really, that's my go-to, man. I understand. That shit gets me like just flushed. I understand. Now, have you seen anything else, Shooter? I like to escape from Dan Mora. I don't know. Oh, if we I want to acknowledge this. That. I want to acknowledge this because a couple of weeks, two episodes ago, I talked about if Beale Street could talk, and I said it's good. And I mentioned Regina King. Yeah. She won Best Actress in uh, Golden Globes. Yeah. 
I don't give a fuck if it's the Golden Globes, uh, the Golden Blows, the, the, yeah. the bl- whatever. That's my fucking girl. And I, you, when you see somebody that you've known for so long and like you really are like have a, a relationship with them and you've seen them go through the ebbs and flows of Hollywood and then you see her at like a peak right now, I was so fucking happy for That's her. Dope. I said I liked If Beale Street Could Talk. I didn't think it was as good as Moonlight, but she's so good in everything she does. Uh, uh, and I just was on a personal level, so happy for her. Like she's she's like a true friend of mine. I like that's my girl. I didn't see it, but she's a great she's actress. Always so good. She's just so she's just so good. And there's no tricks. There's no. She's not like an accent person. She's not like a, a sort of a person who sort of disappears into the character. But she she's like you know how like like a great singer like. Frank Sinatra did it. Marvin Gaye did it. They'll take somebody else's song and make it their own, and you'll be like, oh, I didn't know somebody else recorded that first. She's that kind of actress. Like, she just immerses the character, and the, her emotions yeah. are so fucking good. Whereas somebody like Christian Bale, who also won for Vice, people saw him up there yesterday, all skinny with his British accent. People didn't even know he's fucking British, because he had, I think he had yeah. a couple of drinks, and he was foot along Brit. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, he was, oh, he's heavy Brit, dude. But he was heavy duty Brit up there, like kind of kind of sloppy Brit, the way he was speaking. Yeah, he And didn't people give a were fuck. tripping out. Like, he, he, becomes the character. He's method, like in a way like Benicio's method because you were going to mention right. Escape from Damore in the way that De Niro's method where if you see him in real life, you're like, this is the guy? And I just want to say about Bale. Where's, where's Joe Pesci in real life? You say, he's like Joe Pesci. Got you. And I just want to say with Bale, he thanks Satan at the end of his speech. Now, I just want to say everyone's going, Bale, first person yeah. to ever thank yeah. Satan. But I want to bring uh, our, our friends Portugal, the man, into the into the equation mm-hmm. here. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure they thank Satan at the Grammys. Yes, I think it was at the Grammys. That yes, they actually did say, and uh, we want to thank Satan. Yes, or the devil. Yes, one of the two. So I just wanted to say, shout out Portugal, the man, our friends. Um, because friends I'm, of the eye, they're about, they're about to come to LA uh, soon. Uh, we're supposed to hook up with them. They they want to come to the comedy store. Uh, to, friends to, of the I am Rappaport, friends with us, and we're and fans. Good and people, good dudes. We're fans. And uh, so th- so shout out. They said it first. I just want to say that. Um, Escape from Dan Moore. I talked about. You finished watching. I yeah. highly recommend that shit. Yeah, I Patricia I, Arquette won. We mentioned that earlier. I thought it was and, great. And then shunned Lady Gaga starting the Patricia Arquette Lady Gaga beef yep. for 2019. And I just I want to say. Uh, that I thought it was a really good show. I thought all the acting was great. Um, you know, even though the acting was kind of like acting with a capital A at times. You Did know, you think that? Sometimes I felt that about Paul Dano. I like him. He was good. I'm a big Anybody fan of his. Anybody else you think that about? I, I love Benicio. I'm a huge fan. Love him. Did but you I, think he was busy as an actor? I just thought that both of them were doing, you know, Paul Dano Every had scene that, there was like a thing. A thing. Like Paul Dano they had that, that raid. The, the term that they use are choices. Even Patricia yeah. Arquette said Benicio Del Toro, when in her award for Gold Lump, she said Benicio Bel- Del Toro, he makes the best choices. Yeah. He makes a choice. He's one of the best. He's great. I totally love unique, but he was busy in that film. And, and, and still great. Yeah. He's great. Yeah, he is. He's amazing. Um, I, I can't fucking remember. What, 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 what else have you seen, Shooter? Um, I randomly saw this movie from 2015 that Joel Edgerton... He wrote and directed this movie. The actor Joel Edgerton. The actor, and he's also in it. He acts in it. I'm not a fan. I'm not really a fan. I don't just don't get it, Joel Edgerton. He's I'm a not good a actor, good he's looking good. guy. I just, he's like a weird looking guy yeah, to me. But he's handsome guy. Like everybody, All right, you know. So what? Like that, that, that counts. My neighbor's but, handsome. But people, dude. people like we're sitting here going, Emily Bunch, she's beautiful. Kate Beckinsale, she's pretty. Beckinsale. It happens with actors. Johnny Depp yeah. is a good actor, but if he didn't look the way he looks. And the way he looked when he was younger, gorgeous, pretty boy, he wouldn't be rocking yeah. and rolling, period. But some people are just great at, you know, great actors, whatever. I, I, I get it. But Johnny Depp, in my opinion, is not a great actor. He's yeah. a fucking great star. Yeah. It's, it's always refreshing to see Johnny Depp playing a weirdo, you know? Yeah, because he, he, he plays he's straight done guys that about so much. 15, 15 uh, Yeah, he plays characters normal in a row. really all the time. Right. So I don't know what we were just saying. I don't know how we even got to Johnny Depp, but you were talking about um, fuck again. I don't fucking know, man. I, I, listen, I'm not making light of banging my head, but I will say this: since I banged my head, and I, I'm just yeah. saying this, I have been going fuck. I can't remember what I was going to say. Shit, maybe you should go 
like rebang it and get it back. I don't like how they re- break your nose again to like fix no, it. No, I'm not gonna do that. That All was right. fucking scary. Okay, sorry. Don't yeah, don't do that. Actually, uh, I don't know what we you were talking about. You want to make light of me banging my head? You want that's no. Joke I mean, it's just to? you know. You said, oh, I fainted and you know we yeah, we no, I, I fell. It was you kind of fucking, like fucking you were you you heard me from the fuck. I called the shooter in the emergency you called room. Me. You called me. You know, but you know, we fainted. What what was it last week? Five days ago. Five days ago. Um, you know they. I'm not you bump your head. I didn't uh, bump my head, motherfucker. No, I, I fucking dropped no. and landed on my head. I know. I'm just saying. My head woke me up. I'm just saying. When you get a are concussion, you, are you? Um, I'm not making light yeah, of the situation. Yeah, I think you are making no, light I'm, of it. I'm really not. I'm just saying that you know, usually you bump your head, and oh my god, if it's so bad a concussion, you wait two days, and and that's when the worst thing could happen after two days. All right. And and I'm just I saying think we're five days in now, so usually. You know, I, I, I have plates and screws in my leg. I don't know if the oh, listeners know that. from your skateboarding accent from my 27 years ago. My, I cracked my head open when I was 10 years old. 10 I, years old, motherfucker. And I fainted. Nobody cares about that I shit. I fainted. Um, okay, okay. So uh, I'm just saying, I think your head is fine. Nah, okay, okay. Um, what else have you seen? <laughs> uh, oh, the Joel Allen Edgerton. So yeah, yeah, the, that's oh, what we were man, talking about. Jesus Christ. You keep getting sidetracked, bro. Your head is all fucked go up. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so the Joel Edgerton, uh, he wrote and directed it. It was in 2015 on Netflix. And uh, Jason- Oh, it was on Netflix or it was it was made for Netflix? Or I don't know what it was made for. You saw it on Netflix. I it's saw on it on Netflix. It's on Netflix currently. Who else is in it? Jason Bateman and Rebecca Hall. Right. I'm a fan of Rebecca Hall. I love Jason Bateman. To me, that dude is just like naturally- funny he's always natural in all the shit he's doing it's not like you know a fucking chameleon of an actor but i like him and this movie was a th- it's like a thriller and it's really good actually it surprised me it was pretty it's good a, it's a movie from a few years ago but you 2015 can watch it you can watch it now okay and then what else have you seen have you seen or just let me ask have you seen anything else because uh, i haven't seen well I, michael I, I'm I pretty. Seen, I think I've articulated everything. I've, I've seen, seen a. I'm saving a lot for when we talk about the Academy Awards, but I've seen a lot in theaters. You saw Roma. I did see Roma, and I saw that in theaters, which I thought was. I thought it was a great movie. The cinematography was incredible. Uh, Alfonso Cuaron. I, Logan. What's that? I have to say Alfonso Cuaron. Cuaron. I have to Cuaron. get it right because every time I say that name. Logan, who's friends with the Iron Rapper. Logan Lerman. Logan Lerman, who's friends with the Iron Rapper. Friend of the Iron Rapper, surprises, but but doesn't come on anymore. No. So are you a friend? I. That's a good question. I yeah. don't know. So yeah. he always corrects me whenever I say his last name. It's got to oh, be perfect. Really? Yeah. So I can't say Alfonso Cuaron. Okay. How I say okay. It. Anyway, yeah. so he's always dope. Um, anything else? Have you seen anything else worth mentioning? Okay, that's the answer. All right, Dean. So you moved into a new crib. You haven't dusted off the space light. I do want to just say this, worth mentioning. I have I, I see movies all the time. I go every day, every other day. I Logan, again, shout out Logan, friends of the I Am Rapport podcast. He has invited me to go this month. I refuse this, this month and last month of December and January to go see any of the films in theaters. I'm not seeing Bumblebee. I'm not the seeing fuck Aquaman. Is Bumblebee? It's the Transformers spinoff nah, that's supposed to be, going to see supposed to be great. I'm going not going to see seeing fucking Bumblebee. Aquaman. Fuck I'm all that shit. I'm not seeing Aquaman. I'm not seeing Spider-Man. No Spider-Man. disrespect to any of those people sure. that are in them, and no disrespect to any of the fans that love them, because I know I'm in the minority. Right. I'm not fucking with Aquaman. I'm not seeing... Uh, even the, the poster alone of him doing the hang loose nah, sign out of the water. Sorry, Duke. You lost me. Mary Poppins, I'm nope. not seeing. So all these movies in come out... Mary Poppins. Get the... This is for kids. I'm not seeing them. The fuck, I'm 40. If I'm pushing 50, I'm going to be 49 in March. You are, yeah. Okay. Damn. So you, those are the things you're not seeing. Those are all the things that I am not seeing. Is there anything else we need to pinpoint with you? You've been rocking with me uh, at the comedy clubs. I've been going what with you What is your to... take on com- comedians? We be, we're not going to name names, but yeah. we spend a lot of time around comedians. What is your, your you know, you said like you feel like you could get into comedy um, very quickly if you just acted the way some of the other comedians do. Do you want to do a bit right I, here? I, I, don't want, I don't want you to say, oh, here, we're doing a bit, but let me just like explain it. Like I'll just, I'll explain. I'll just explain it. Let me just explain what I'm talking There's about. There's certain when you, kinds when you mean of comedians that. that do certain things. So just going with you into this, it, like I said, it's kind of like a band, you know, you're, you're watching this, you know, I'm backstage, I'm, I'm with you and, and I'm watching you develop and each show gets better and better. But as I'm going through these shows with you, I always have to kind of hang out with the other comedians and, and um, I'm backstage and I'm watching people either watch you or pretend to be nice to you or whatever it is. But <laughs> I will say that there's a whole other world um, that goes on backstage in the comedian lifestyle without naming any names. We don't need to name names of any of these You comedians. don't have to at all, but I will tell you that 
everyone that I've met, there's been some nice people, you know, the majority of people are really nice, but everyone that I've met has the biggest ego in any, prof I mean, I'll tell you, I think worse than actors. Oh, by worse far. Than, like by far, worse than by actors, far. musicians, e everybody. I've never seen anything like Me either. They, they, they will they, tell you everything they've done in their career. Literally, we had one guy who's a very famous comedian tell us everything that he's done in his career Yes. In five minutes, without asking. Without asking, without... I don't even know how I got on that roller coaster, but and I was like, what the fuck is going on? I went on, I personally went on autopilot, so all I was doing was just looking and going, oh, awesome. And then after, after five seconds, I go, oh, no way. And then after five seconds, tight. So we do that fi the whole five minutes. Comedians are bugged the fuck Insane. out. Insane. And they're all like, they're, it's, it's like Mean Girls type shit. Like they're nice to you. And then when you're on stage, I'll sit next to one of them and they're on their phone the whole time. And then they'll go, uh -huh. and, and they're not looking. So I'm like, you don't, it's just a whole, hold on. So, what is that? Is that a comedian? Me, is that a joke or is that a sneeze? No, I was sneezing. That's not a joke. I was ma I was sneezing. I don't know how you sneeze. That's just a keep, regular keep, sneeze. Keep that in, Miles. Keep that no, in. No, you could take no, we're that not out. Deleting hey, it. Can I say anything to Miles too? Just, go ahead. Yeah, you could take that out, Miles, please. Or we could just keep it in, Miles. Anyway, go well, ahead. Maybe with take the it out, Miles, if you wanted to. So, but like if, yeah. if these and these particular comedians, do you notice that they're always telling jokes? Here's the thing. Every time backstage, it's never just like normal, like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, nice to meet you. Oh, cool, dude. Yeah, this is gonna be a good show. Yeah, great. You're from LA? No way. What part? That's like a normal small talk conversation within meetings, you know, someone within the yeah, first two minutes. Yeah. But for some reason, everyone is doing a bit like within, like you're just kind of a prop. Like I could be a fucking mannequin for all you care, whatever, you know, you stick a mannequin right there and they're, they're doing bits with you. Like I, they, they don't unsolicited, care. unsolicited bits with me. And everything is just, and then when I watch them on stage, here's another thing I noticed about comedians. I don't know if anyone's talking about this, but you know how there's always a fucking stool on the stage? Uh -huh. There's always a stool on a stage, and every comedian somehow uses this stool as like a prop for whatever they're talking about. And they're they're going around it, and it's like a fucking, it's like, oh, hey, we're driving, and they're leaning down with the stool, and they're putting their arm around it. Like, it's my first date at a movie theater, and, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm walking around, and, you know, whoa, the stool is right there. I got to step around the stool, and, you know, oh, there's me and my couch. Or the couch, mic stand or also. Or the mic stand, and they're, they're moving the mic stand around, and I just feel like it's always like, yeah, dude, dude, did you, uh, yeah, did you hear about, uh, yeah, K, K, did you hear about, uh, you know, they're always doing these like weird over the top bits. They're pushing on stage. it. They're pushing it. And I just want, they're working for like, those laughs. Anytime a, anytime a joke doesn't work, they, all you got to do is like kick your feet up and like do like a karate kick with your fucking, that's all you got to do. You'll the get joke, the crowd. That's a, good, that's a good tip. If you don't, if a joke doesn't land, do a karate kick or like a swivel. <laughs> that's that's it. Like a karate chop. You could do a karate oh, yeah. chop. Yes. Then throw the kick into the mix. And do something with the stool. And if you're flexible like you are, yes. which really helps, do something with the stool and make the stool your prop. You will kill the fucking crowd. All right. Well, Dean, this has been excellent. I don't know if it has. Nice, I feel like good, it's ran good. a little Nice, no, good. It's good shit. It's good shit. Um, it's rainy it's and shit. It's good shit, but it's over. Um, it's so listen. Over. I am Rapport Stereo Podcast, uh, the Young Shooter. Thank you for rocking, uh, Miles Jordan. Oh uh, shit! Hold on, what? bro. There's a giant spider oh. right over your head. Like no bullshit. You just said it. That's it's as if it was just what the chilling. fuck is that? That looks like a fucking uh, Black Widow. That's giant. Hold that's on, giant. All right, let's let's let's. No, that's like really big, and it's just on your couch, right next to your ear. All right, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Miles Jordan, take us out of here with something real nice. It's coming towards something real us. Funky. It's coming towards us.